Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to episode three of season four, Uncaged. My name is Mike Larkin, and joining me as always is my boy, the one, the only, Mr. DC, Daniel Crimmins. Daniel, how are we doing tonight? We are fantastic. We are back at it again. We have another show, but tonight, folks, what are we doing, Michael? We are taking it to the extreme. We are going to be looking from 2006 to 2010. I saw what you did there, kind sir. We are looking at ECW on sci-fi from 2006 to 2010. The moments, the memories, and the actual what the fuck. (laughs) was a whole lot of what the fuck. What the fuck. So I think the best for a few years. Yes. Well, I will say the best way to start it is so ECW One Night Stand 2006 happened. Rob Van Dam beat John Cena for the WWE Championship. Honestly, Mike, if we're really going to do this justice, okay. we've got to go be out before that. You want to start the ECW One Night Stand 05? Even before that, we're talking the DVD, the Rise and Fall yes. of ECW, okay. which I still, I swear, to this day, we're talking 19 years later. Right. Still, I will say the best home video release that WWE has ever done. Well, they went next to the Ric Flair one. Yes, but this one they also went very in depth with like the mass transit story and all the stuff that was in there. Like they really touched upon a lot of stuff that you wouldn't think that they would touch upon. And so we have the one night stand DVD, which I think was Vince's way of basically saying, you know what? I'm sick of hearing ECW. Put the DVD out, let that be the end of it. Yeah, so they do the rise and fall of ECW, and then you got to thank Rob Van Dam, the whole effing show, because he's the one who pitched One Night Stand, and that's how we got the amazing One Night Stand 2005. Which, amazing pay-per-view. But Mike again, awesome. Yep, Mike Awesome. Um, yep, Mike Awesome, Masato Tanaka. Uh, we had Sabu and Rhino. We had the Dudleys against Tommy Dreamer and Sandman. We had so many great, great bouts on that. Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit. We oh, them. yeah. Great show. Um like top to bottom, that was a great pay per view, and because I think with that, that was Paul Heyman creative control. Like yeah. Paul did everything. Like you let Rey Mysterio go out there with psychosis. Like you let everybody just go and just cook. Yep. And then, you know, of course, they saw how much money it made, and then paul or that would be just actually if you really think about it to money in the bank 2006 if you think about it yes when rob van dam won at wrestlemania in the bank at wrestlemania 22 yep that was the same one which we've mentioned many a times matt hardy superplexing rick flair off the ladder which (laughs) why i remember watching that thinking oh god that old man is dead it was pretty bad. He was Ric Flair was beat up really badly after that. But hey, we'll we'll get to Ric Flair and ECW later. Oh my so, lord! So Van Dam wins next night on Raw. Says you know he's cashing in a one night stand. And it's like oh okay like, yeah, oh, oh okay. And we're thinking it's going to be more of the same. It, it wasn't. It was not. <laughs> it was not. then I think if I remember right, a couple weeks before the show. There were rumors that, e- that Vince McMahon was reviving ECW as the third brand. Yes, that was thinking, okay because they announced initially they were saying, "Oh, it's going to be on. It's going to be on the internet. It's going to be on like yes. WWE.com." Because Shane McMahon wanted to handle the online stuff, and he was the one who pitched that, which could have worked. Because I mean, this is pre YouTube. Yes, so this was what MySpace era still. Yeah. Uh, so it could have worked; it would have been interesting, but then it became oh well, it's gonna be it's gonna be on Sci-Fi. I think it was was it Tuesday, like Tuesday, like ten Tuesday o'clock? at ten p.m. Yep. And then it's like, well, Sci-Fi, okay. Well, you know, it still, still could work. I mean, it's better than TNN or Spike TV. Well, that was my first thought. I'm like, out of all the networks, Sci-Fi. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I well, guess. it's Viacom, so it's probably like you know they're probably trying to gain traction for that. So I was like, mm-hmm, okay. And you hear, oh, they're reviving it. Like, hmm. Okay. okay. And then you get excited. Then we get to ECW One Night Stand 06. Mm-hmm. And what made this historic, we got Rob Van Dam cashing in 
on the WWE champion John Cena. So for the first time ever, you were having the WWE championship defended on an ECW show. Yes, and the big thing about that was they really hyped up RVD and Cena because at this time, Edge had won the money in the bank, but this is the first time that actually someone said, hey, I'm challenging here. No sneak attacks. This is where we're going to do it because Rob Van Dam was a babyface at the time. Mm-hmm. So we get to One Night Stand 06. We get and to yeah. <laughs> great. Cena, the only time since he became a world champion that he's worked heel. Yes, throw in the shirt. They wiped their ass and threw it right back at John multiple Cena. Multiple times. Yes, multiple times. Um, we, what, like, we got to address the infamous sign. If Cena wins, we, we ride. ride. Which, folks, if Mike and I can attest, being from New York, they would have. They would have actually rioted in the Hammerstein Ballroom. This is New York City we're talking. This is the they hard. They would have This is the diehard of the diehard fans. They would fucking do it. And it's New I mean, York. Don't fuck with New York. Case in point, uh, depending on when this goes out, this past Friday night on SmackDown, which would be the Friday, June 28th edition of SmackDown. Mm-hmm. If you remember, multiple times the screen cut to black and there was audio issues. Folks, they were censoring it. Yep. There were fuck you solo chants. After Paul Heyman absolutely got molly whopped in one of the greatest endings on SmackDown Wait, ever. According to Paul Levesque, once a Netflix deal happens, no censorship. Which we're going back to cursing. I, I, I'm all for it. I, I'm I, here I'm like, for it. Okay, let's see what happens. I know. And I mean, what we get to see is like, like, like Daniel mentioned, the fuck you solo chance and just how riveting the storytelling is. And I mean, the storytelling going into one night stand 06 was oh, yeah. riveting. like RVD and Cena, uh, Terry Funk and Tommy dreamer against edge and Mick Foley. And so edge. with yeah. that, you know, you had the storyline of you had Tommy dreamer and you had Terry Funk who didn't want to participate in eat in one night stand 05 because he thought, you know, they weren't going to do ECW justice, that they were trying to, it was just a cheap money ploy. And when he saw what it was, he said, okay, yeah, I'll do it. And then you had Mick Foley turning heel, joining up with Edge, kind of denouncing the hardcore. Co-owners of the hardcore championship. And then it ended up kind of sort of being like a intergender six-person tag with the Tommy, Terry, and Beulah versus Edge, Lita, and Mick Foley, which it was honestly, amazing. It was great. You know, you it had Edge good. spearing Beulah and that pin. That, oh, that pin. That pin. You know the one I'm talking about. I know the one you're talking about. And also Terry Funk getting freaking the barbed wire and getting stuck and hadn't be cut out in the fire. And like they legit yeah. went back to Mick Foley, Terry Funk, ECW 95. This is literally what we did, but I love that. I wouldn't even say we're going like Mick Fo- Cactus Jack versus Terry Funk in Japan. This is like the MFW, the King of the Death Match type of vibes that we got there. Yeah. Um, Sandman beating the crap out of Eugene. Like, wow. <laughs> you know, in a normal WWE crowd, Sandman would have gotten booed out of the building. But no, Eugene like fuck WWE. Fuck you, Eugene. And Eugene's sitting around like, why are you all yelling at me? Why are you hating me? And then Sam and came out and absolutely fucking blistered him. Nick Dinsmore. Nick Dinsmore, a.k.a. Eugene, has yeah. talked about it. Like He said he knows. Like He, he knew. <laughs> yeah. He's like, okay. Like, it's, you know, okay. Do we even tear, talk about one of your favorite matches from this card, Rey Mysterio and Sabu? All right. You open Pandora's box with this. So, you know what? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go there. This match it was horrible. This is to me is when you knew that the relaunch of ECW was not going to be like it was. No, you know, great match up until the end. You know, you have uh, you have Sabu putting a t- you know straddling the table between the guardrail and the ring apron, and then you have him. You know, you you have uh, Ray Mysterio on the table. Sabu does a little flippy dip, flippy dippy over the rope. DDTs Ray over the, you know through the table, and what happens? 
bell rings. So you're like, oh, what was that? Disqualification. It was it was a no contest, and it just like it's they, an ECW e- show. And like, no we all knew we all knew Sabu wasn't going to win the world heavyweight title. Like he could have just taken the pin. <laughs> like, they did the DDT through the table, which was a sick spot, but like, really, no contest. Okay, sure. Like, what the fuck? Like to me, that is when you're like, okay, get it. This is what we're. So to me, Paul Heyman didn't produce this show. Well, we, oh, yeah. even before that, we got to remember what match opened the show. We yeah. had Jerry the King Lawler versus Taz. Taz. And Joey Styles jumping on Jerry's back, and then the immediate Taz mission for the for the win for Taz. You have Taz come out in a baseball jersey, brother, pants, and the shirt, and or the uh, the towel. And even Taz has admitted that it was he shouldn't have done it. No, I mean physically, Taz could not wrestle. He he even said he you know he can't. Well, you know what else a Taz can't do? He can't take someone saying his lines, Jordan Grace, and just yell and trademark. <laughs> they buried the hatchet, though. So they're, they're good. Right. Good. But still, it's ridiculous. But, you know, Taz and Jerry Lawler was like 45 seconds, and it just, yeah, it shouldn't have happened. But we also got Balls Mahoney and Masato Tanaka, which was – That was fine. Uh, Randy Orton and Kurt Angle. Okay. No. <laughs> no, no, Randy Orton and Kurt Angle. <laughs> Well, this was Kurt Angle's first pay per view as at ECW. Perk, Perk Angle, as they call him. Oh, dude, the, the whole setup was Kurt Angle going to ECW, the big show going to ECW. If you remember even before this, Daniel, they did WWE versus ECW. I remember um, it was like a that special they did. And, you know, you had, uh, I remember the Battle Royal. Yep. And, you know, they all had their shirts of the respective brand. And I think what was it? And it ended up being it was Kurt Angle, Randy Orton, and Big Show. And Edge. Angle gets eliminated. And so you're thinking, oh, WWE's won. And I think they were playing the Raw theme at the time, which was Union Undergrounds across the world or across Across the the nation. Across the nation. Which to me is still the greatest Raw theme they've ever had. Amazing. It's amazing. And then it saps and Big Show tears off the shirt. It's the ECW shirt. He tosses, you know, he yeets Randy Orton <laughs> over the rope, and then ECW wins. It's like, all right. Well, this is the same show that had Mickey James versus Jazz and Jazz's only appearance in the in the new WWE ECW. Uh, Rob Van Dam versus Rey Mysterio, which was really really good. And I mean, after one night stand and that Let's amazing, not forget Sabu yeah. versus John Cena. That was at Vengeance 06. Yes, that's right. What that's the right. Fuck was that? The Extreme Lumberjack match. For the WWE title, wasn't it? Oh, well, that was Edge and Rob Van Dam. Oh, that's right. Yes. After so Edge, Van Dam had, uh, well. The ECW title and the WWE title. And then after that. Both in one week. Yes, because he got high. Because he got high. Thank you, Sabu. Yes, with his possession of marijuana, RVD lost the WWE title to Edge and Cena and then the Big Show and then Big Show got trash thrown at him because it was fucking ridiculous and they didn't want to see the Big Show as ECW champion. But you know what? Big Show as ECW champion did give us you know some appearances. So before that, we have to talk about one of the worst segments in any W... I am talking, of course, about the Sandman... Versus the zombie, the one, the first match ever on ECW on Sci-Fi. God rest his soul, Tim Arson. Now, do you remember what Tim Arson was actually doing this week? Did I ever tell you this story? No. Okay, so Tim Arson was an extra talent this week. So he wrestled on Heat, which which they do, which they take before Raw against Matt Stryker as Tim Arson. He did it. He did an enhancement role there, and then the next day on ECW on Sci-Fi, when they would also tape SmackDown, he was the. Oh, the zombie. Get the microphone, just look. Because we're on sci fi, ladies and gentlemen. So we get the Sandman and the zombie. And it's. And Sandman just goes absolutely ape shit. And he goes ape shit with the cane, does the white Russian leg sweep one, two, three. That was literally the whole match. It was literally the whole match. And then we're like, yeah, this is not going to be like ECW at all. This is not. It's not. It's really not. <laughs> I mean, they literally 
didn't even try to bring back any of the ECW guys apart from like Sandman, Sabu, Dreamer. Fucking Danny Doring was on there. Danny Doring wrestled a few matches. But you had guys like Chris Chetty. Uh, I think Mike Awesome had passed in between 05 yeah, and 06. Yeah, we didn't get Chetty. We got Danny Doring. We got Roadkill. And we got a couple others. We got Ian Rotten. No, Axel Rotten, excuse me. And we then got, he got fired very quickly because he got fired because he's a dumbass. Um, we had the late great Balls Mahoney. Oh, yeah. Balls was very big on the ECW brand at the time. And you know what? Honestly, to me, Balls Mahoney is an underrated wrestler. Well, we're going to talk about a match he had at a certain pay-per-view at 06 in a few minutes. But I, I will say this about Balls. I've always enjoyed his character. I had the pleasure of meeting the late great Balls Mahoney. Very nice guy. Very good dude. Um, God rest his soul. God rest his soul. But, yeah, there were so many legends that they did bring in. But then they also brought in a couple guys from developmental. Dare I say, I'm looking at you, Mike Knox and Kelly Kelly. With <laughs> Kelly Kelly, who was 19 years old, being an exhibitionist. And the, the heel guy, Mike Knox, the boyfriend, is upset that his girlfriend is taking her clothes out for, for people. Like, why are you taking your clothes off for everybody else? But Mike Knox is the heel. Normally, that would make Mike Knox the baby face. But... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Pro wrestling. Pro, Pro wrestling. wrestling. Pro wrestling. But, so we had him. You know, and another thing, you know, we had the debut episode. We had Rob Van Dam being crowned as the ECW champion. Mm -hmm. I have some things to say about that segment. Okay, go ahead. The new ECW championship yes. wasn't ready. At that point, mm -hmm. if you watch it, they handed Van Dam a replica. Wow. Okay. Rewatch that segment. And at that time, those plates were two millimeters thick. So that's, you know, pretty thin. That's thinner than my patience for, you know, the ECW on sci fi brand. Which. With also, also your patience being tested here, Mr. Daniel Kermans. I mean, we did get some good debuts. I mentioned Mike Knox, but we did get the debut of CM Punk in his promos. And, you know, we had some really solid. We had uh, Just Incredible, you know, was on there as well. Um, we had Ric Flair. Ric Flair and the Big Show for the ECW Championship. It was not a bad match. That was one of the best matches of Big Show. You had Ric Flair, the most anti-ECW guy in the world. And he's like, what? It's like, what What are you talking about? Like, anti-ECW. Like, But that's my thing, too. Like, Ric Flair and the Big Show had a great match. You had The Undertaker versus The Big Show. And he said, The Undertaker was on the ECW Championship. The ECW Championship. Uh, do you want to comment on CM Punk, like I mentioned? Like, this was his debut as well. What do you have to say? I remember the vignettes. And then we had, we had CM Punk versus just incredible in the Hammerstein, if I'm not mistaken. I was there for that live. That was a great match. And you know what? Where it all started with uh, good old Phil Brooks. Can I just say one thing? This was also the same night as Big Show and the Batista, and Batista where everybody was chanting, change the channel. I was for, there. For... That was the ECW title, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> they were chanting, change the channel, because it was really, really bad. And they crapped all over that. And I mean, I remember a, that like the, the, the crowd was just, you no, know. no, they weren't having it. Why would you run that match in New York City? Because reasons to get a number because Batista, world heavyweight champion. I, I don't know. I don't know. But we did get Big Show and Sabu at SummerSlam 06, which I got to say, not a bad match as well for the ECW brand. No, not, not, not terrible, but like. <laughs> You could tell at that point, Sabu, you know, all of them, they, they were just in there for the money. Yeah, and I mean, the ECW things also got inter intertangled with a lot of the storylines. Like, Big Show had to replace the Great Kali at the Great American Bash 06 because of his liver enzymes, that being the Great Kali elevated liver enzymes. And we got Undertaker in the Big Show and one of the worst uh, Punjabi prison matches ever. That whole match was just... Terrible. There's never been a good Punjabi prison match. Never. Never. I think there's, wasn't there one with, with Jinder Mahal? And Randy Orton when the great Kali came out and helped Jinder Mahal. Yep. I mean, the look of it is cool, but it's like, it's obvious. It's not bamboo. It's not bamboo at all. 
but you know, we had to find a gimmick for the great Kali's signature matchup. And I mean, we this time period also gave us not only Big Show and Sabu and, and all that, but Big Show teamed with the McMahons to take on DX and the handicap Hell in a Cell, where Vince we McMahon's had Vince's head going up Big Show's ass. His bloody ass, not even just his ass. That, that's like hepatitis right there. Like hepatitis. Ass. Hepatitis. Ass. Yes, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. And then you just had ECW actually get killed in the Team DX matchup with Team Rated RKO and all that group. And the infamous, oh boy, hi Kelly, hi Kelly. Boom, sweet chin music. Who was that? Who who was that? Mike Knox. Oh, was he in the match? Was he in the floor? Mike Knox got buried in like six seconds. He got buried in six seconds. Poor Mike Knox. And then oh. we had, you know, that pay-per-view which we're not going to talk about hold on, hold on. Well, you, you made forgot, me watch you forgot what other part of that match remember when Shawn michaels he's facing nitro and then he does the infamous put the arm around melina and then he goes oh <laughs> that infamous spot that was didn't great they, that's great didn't they redo that spot yeah yeah they did that with Rhea, and <laughs> yes they did that with Rhea and seth rollins <laughs> Now that's who it was. Yes, that was so it was, good. Was, was it, it was Survivor Series, wasn't it? Or was it I before think, that? No, I think it was before that. But yeah, the Sean and Melina thing was Survivor Series 06. This was the same year where ECW got like molly whopped at Survivor Series. Like it was a shutout. Like it was Team WWE and Team ECW, and then they got shut out. Like <laughs> WWE buried the brand like really, really bad. Like really bad. And then we got to the infamous pay-per-view that we touched upon. Go back and listen to us watch and talk about ECW December to December 06 with Balls Mahoney and Matt Stryker. My and, hate me. and the Hardys and Eminem. And the not so extreme elimination chamber match because there was some spots, but you could tell like they were they they were done. Paul Heyman was gone. It, it was devastating. He didn't give a shit. He didn't give a shit. I'm not mistaken. After December to December, didn't he get fired the next day or quit? Or I think he quit because him and Vince had like a screaming match on the plane and backstage. Oh, it was bad. And it was also the end of the big show for a while until he came back at No Way Out 08. And then him and Floyd Mayweather had that match at WrestleMania 24. And he got legit knocked out. And he got legit knocked out. Yeah, it was... Yeah, he was, told Floyd. He told Floyd Mayweather, "You need to hit me." Like hit he hit him. Her, Mayweather has, has told the story, you know, a couple times. He said, you know, he was afraid. To, like he didn't know, and they, he said, you know, he went up to me and he said, "Hey, you need to hit me. You, you know, don't pull the punch." Because he's, you know, Floyd's a businessman. He is. You know, Floyd wanted it to look good. And Big Show said, look, you got to, you know, he said, hit me for real. And he hit so him. not only did he get hit, he got hit with brass knuckles. It was, it was, it was an, it was a amazing yeah, to quote he the did. great John Witherspoon. He got knocked the fuck out. Wow. That was one of my favorite WrestleMania moments. I think the build to that and everything that from yeah. the celebrity. It was, it, was fun. it was. And that's what, that's what wrestling is all about. I mean, to add on to your point is. Yeah. To you know, go on to that. Like Floyd Mayweather, I, I'm not a fan. I, I yeah, admit it. I get he's it. He's a businessman and he's an entertainer. I equate that to Logan Paul now. Like how a lot of people don't like Logan Paul, but he he's a showman. Yeah. Like honestly, Logan Paul's great. Like you want to see him lose. And that's yeah, the, yeah. And that's the art of being a great heel. And yeah, I mean, yeah. And I mean, if you look, dude, the big show at this time as well, because we mentioned this was the end of him, he would go on, like we mentioned before, coming back. Remember they had that infamous, it was supposed to be Hulk Hogan and Jerry Lawler on this Memphis show, and WWE pulled Jerry Lawler, so they did Hulk Hogan and the big show on that yeah. show. Yeah, we were originally yeah. going we were originally going to get Hogan and Lawler, but Lawler said, the WWE said, no, you, Jerry, you're not going to work your show in your own hometown. No, you're not going to do this. And after this, we was the right call. It was absolutely. And then, I mean, after this, Bobby Lashley is the new ECW champion. We start two, which, okay. which we start with 2007, him and Test, <clears throat> and, that, and that God rest his soul in that feud for the ECW championship, which was god awful. 
And then we get to the infamous him and Umaga in the Battle of the Billionaires. My man, Bobby. Go get him, Bobby. Donald you manga. You manga. <laughs> Shane coming in doing the Van Terminator. Uh, Austin stunning everybody. Vince getting his head shaved. That was the moment, one of the great moments of WrestleMania. And let's not forget, who, who, who else got a stunner on, on that WrestleMania? Donald Trump. Steve Austin, the only man to have ever stunned a United States president. This is very true. This is very true. And this also gave us the debut of Vince McMahon and the handicap match pinning Bobby Lashley to win the ECW championship. The debut of Do-Rag Vince. <laughs> and uh, if you remember earlier this season, we did the episode, or an earlier episode, we did Things You Can't Get Away With Now. Yep, go back and listen to that episode. We had the episode where Vince basically called Sabu a terrorist. It's a member of the Taliban. <laughs> and the, the fucking Durag. Excuse me while I whip this out. Oh, God. The Durag Vince era. And then Bobby Lashley squashes him in like a minute and a half at One Night Stand 07, which the One Night Stands were not ECW anymore. It was just WWE One Night Stand. Yeah. Which they ran for a little bit. Because he knew at that point. And honestly, I still think the whole thing was Vince's way of trying to kill ECW. Oh, agreed. And uh, that's the reason I was like, hey, I'm going to make myself the ECW champion. I'm the leader of this brand. Yeah. Just to piss them, piss everybody off. Uh, Vince with his run as ECW champion. They did the two handicap matches. Then Vince got squashed. Bobby Lashley had to vacate the title because he got drafted to Raw. And, well, this would lead to a tournament for the ECW championship, which would be decided at Night of Champions, Vengeance Night of Champions that year. And it was supposed to be, and this is probably going to be one of the only times we're ever going to mention him. That uh, name. That name. Uh, Chris Benoit versus CM Punk for the ECW World Championship. Uh, Chris Benoit was supposed to go over and be the ECW champion, be like the veteran champion. Which uh, I will say, not to cut you off, but no. honestly, I think would have been incredible. I think, you know, looking back at it, excuse me, mm -hmm. I think had that not happened, I think Benoit as ECW champion would have done great things for that brand. All right, so I will follow back with you on this because Kurt Angle has originally talked about this. So we mentioned Perk Angle, as he was at the time. Uh, he would later go on to debut for TNA in 06, where Kurt says the original plan was they were going to put the title on him. Now, him being the veteran at the time, how awesome would that have been to see Kurt Angle as the ECW champion? Again, either him or Ben would have been great. Because, you know, it's if you're trying to and, – and I kind of get putting the belt on Vince because you're trying to – you're wanting to, to get eyes on the brand and you're trying things. Mm -hmm. That I think would have worked because, you know, it would have brought some legitimacy. But at the same time, things, you know, what they are, we all know what happened. Um, that guy did what he did. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever. It is what it is. We're, we're, we ended up getting Johnny Nitro, Johnny TV, John Morrison, John Hannigan. Which, what did you think about as a last minute choice, Johnny Nitro, who wasn't even on ECW at the time? I think he was on Raw. He was still, yes. he was still on Raw. It, actually, it was the wrong call. Yep. They should have had Punk go over, but at the same time, Punk was, you know, the newcomer. I get it. You know, now that I'm older, I get it at the time I thought it was stupid. And we had multiple, you know, we had, I think like the next two shows, we had him beating Punk, cheating. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I got to bring this up because you're going to bring back a memory. I was at SummerSlam 07 when they had that third match. Dude, guys, for the two matches that they had after that, the Great American Bash and SummerSlam, those those were stinkers. Like, th those matches really, really sucked. And I mean... Then Johnny Nitro gets caught up in that pharmacy thing where everybody got suspended in 07. Remember that? Well, literally half the roster. Like half him. the roster. Mysterio, Ed. I think, got, got Edge. Popped. Yep, Edge. Edge. Kennedy. Everybody. Kennedy. Kennedy. Everybody did. Like, that was a big deal. And we had to put the champion on someone. And all right, let's give it to the straight edge guy. And CM Punk finally won the ECW World Championship because Johnny Nitro got suspended. 
<laughs> That's literally why. But now before we get into the Punk and we go into, oh wait, one other thing I want to touch upon with ECW because Punk was also part of this. We had the new breed against the originals and the new breed was Elijah Burke, Kevin Thorne, Matt Stryker, uh, Marcus Corvan, a.k.a. the alpha male, Monty Brown, who was in but the pound, room. Pound, period. Against another the Buffalo East- guy, by the way. Another, yeah. Uh, ECW originals were Rob Van Dam, Sabu, Tommy Dreamer, and the Sandman. They got a WrestleMania match at WrestleMania 23. But what everybody talks about is that infamous Extreme Rules match. Elijah Burke hits the Elijah Express, and Sabu's head goes through that table. Ow. What did you think about that feud? From there, Elijah Burke was fucked. Yep. You know, he, he was done. But you know what? Hey, now Sandman can say he's undefeated at WrestleMania. This is true. And I mean, the only other tweak that we had was the ruse that CM Punk turned heel and joined the new breed only for them to like implode within themselves. I thought that was kind of a ridiculous touch, but, but okay. And then CM Punk would go on a few with Elijah Burke. Um, <laughs> Who, out of everybody, he did that Q and A. He's like one of the worst matches he's ever had was with Elijah Burke. I'm like, I've seen that match. Like those matches were not bad. I don't like. I'm not. What the hell are you talking about? I don't know if he's being serious or if or was, mean, if he's just being CM Punk. Well, that that is true. If he's being CM Punk. So speaking of CM Punk, he is our ECW champion at the end of 07. He has his title defense against the Miz at Cyber Sunday. Um, he the big thing that really came out of that run was. He feuded with Chavo Guerrero, and then Edge helps Chavo Guerrero win the ECW championship. Chavo Guerrero is the new ECW champion. They have a Gulf of Mexico match where CM Punk GTS is Chavo Guerrero to Gulf of Mexico, and then they have a couple pay-per-view matches with Chavo winning. Then we get to fucking WrestleMania 24. Chavo Guerrero against Kane for the ECW championship. Literally like eight seconds. Eight seconds. (laughs) <laughs> Kane is behind Chavo Choke slam one two three. <laughs> See you later, Chavo. See you later, Chavo. And Chavo and Kane, has- wasn't even, Kane wasn't even on ECW. He was on Raw. No, he was on. Was, no, was he on SmackDown? No, on, no, was on Raw. Okay, whatever. One of them. Yes, I think you're correct. But yeah, no, I think Kane, I forgot even how he won. I think he won like a number one contenders battle royal or whatever the fuck. But Kane yeah, was I think in, on like the pre-show or something. Yeah, but Kane was in this match. And that was the big thing. Kane was in this match. He won a battle royal, like Daniel mentioned. And then just choke slam one, two, three. He comes back from high. No pyro. No, no pyro from Kane. No pyro. And comes just, through the crowd. Comes through the crowd. Because Kane would do that. <laughs> It was bad. It was it was bad. Then they had the rematch, and then they feuded. And then Kane is the ECW champion. Him, the, I believe it was him, the Big Show, and uh, Mark. No, it was him, Big Show, and Mark Henry. Yeah, for the uh, Vengeance, Night of Champions. And then Mark Henry wins his first ever world championship in WWE, the ECW World Championship. And he's and then, then like, we get that God ugly, the ugliest red. world title that I have ever seen, that silver monstrosity. Yep, that was the debut of the Silver Monstrosity. <laughs> well, it's also a debut of a. <laughs> we got Tony Atlas. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got Mark Henry and Tony Atlas. What did you think about putting Tony Atlas and Mark Henry as his oh, manager? Me too. It was he was funny. He was you know, good. having met Tony Atlas. He's good people. He's good people. Yes, he's he's got a weird fetish, but he's good people. Mike, we're, we're on the wrong platform for that. Yes, we are. But oh, yeah, Tony. There's, Tony likes to be. St- there's other sites where we can refer to that. Yes, Tommy. All you need to know, folks, is Tony Atlas likes to be stepped on. That's all you need to know. But Mark Henry is the ECW champion. Um, he has title defenses against Tommy Dreamer. Uh, he beats the holy hell out of Colin Delaney, who was their version of Mikey Whipper. Fucking Colin Delaney, good God, who was like the Mikey Whipper. And he's time. still wrestling. He does. He's been on WWE. He got squashed by the Bludgeon Brothers years ago. He's. he's still- I remember the scream heard around the world. Ah! <laughs> and I remember seeing interviews with with uh, John Huber, the late great John Huber, Brody yeah, Lee. And hearing him talk about it, like, even Rowan has talked about it. Like, they heard it and, like, 
they heard it back and immediately they laugh every he would laugh every time he hears it. He screamed, he let it be known he was in pain. And I love that Colin Delaney's still wrestling and still doing his thing. He looks in great shape. He doesn't look like he used to, like a like a twig. He he put on some muscle and he, he looks in great shape, which I'm happy because you want to see people do well. Um you know what they, you know what honestly they need to do? What? We have you know, we have Rowan back as you know part of the Wyatt Six. Yes. You know where I'm going with this. Okay. Oh, Recreate it with the Wyatt Six. <laughs> Poor Colin Delaney. I know where you're going. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I went there. Oh man. So yeah, we go from Mark Henry to Tommy Dreamer and uh their feud. Mark Henry beats Tommy Dreamer, and then we get to the ECW scramble where Mark Henry loses the ECW championship to Matt Hardy. It and, um, was wonderful. wonderful. And then Matt Hardy is the new ECW champion, beats Mark Henry on pay-per-view. Matt's doing his thing as ECW champion. He then loses at Royal Rumble 09 to someone who had just debuted at the time, the All-American American Jack Thwaga, who came out he originally. Didn't, no he shirt. Didn't, he didn't like the hat at that time. He did not. He came out with no shirt. Then he, all of a sudden he had a singlet, and they pushed Jack Swagger to the to the moon. moon. And in his first few months in WWE, he's the ECW champion, beat Matt Hardy. So what did you think about how we transitioned from Mark Henry to Matt Hardy to Jack Swagger? <laughs> no. Well, did you even like Swagger at the time? Because he would, they, they were pushing him hard. You know, the... It was the same like they Vince had pet projects. Excuse me. Yeah. And you know, you could tell if someone was getting, you know, overly pushed, like, you know, bang, 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 like you're gonna like them, you're gonna like them. Oh, one of Vince's pet projects. Yep. Yeah. Hey, that's pretty much what it was. And I mean I only- wish Dijack was a pet project. Oh, Poor, poor, poor Dijak. I know he's he's gone now, and yeah, they let him go. TNA sign him. I'm not even gonna say EW because you brought this up to me. Like, just go to TNA, dude. Because I here's why people want him to go to AEW. Keith Lee. That's why. If Keith Lee comes back, if Keith Lee comes back, I'm like, just go. He can, dude. He can have some great stuff. He can do some X Division stuff. He can he can do some stuff in TNA. New Japan. New Japan. Yeah, just yeah. Oh, Dijak, such. On, on you know on tap potential that dude was so good it's just it's a shame it really is um speaking of a shame we we mentioned jack swagger you know, let him you know let him go after mustafa ali and get some retribution you, you're on point with the quips today man you are on point with your quips i like your style daniel Crimmins. so speaking of style jack swagger is the champ this was also around the time period where kofi kingston made his debut in ecw in 2008 um he from would go, Jamaica. From, Vince McMahon has even said about those segments. Kofi's talked about it. God, these are horrible. These are barely passable. And Kofi's like, I can hear him literally burying my vignettes. That's what he said. I can hear Vince burying my vignettes as he's watching them. But oh. Kofi's even said, I'm not Jamaican. And yeah, I'm, I'm from Ghana, West Africa. I don't have, I'm not Jamaican. I live in Boston. Like, <laughs> what the fuck do you want from me? So Kofi is the Jamaican character. Jamaican me crazy, Kofi. Fucking Mike Adamley was also on commentary at this time. Jamaican me crazy, Kofi. Jeff Harvey. J- Jeff Harvey. Yes, he was so bad. Mike Adamley. And then he became the Raw GM. Got arrested. Uh, because I think he passed too. No, he's still alive, I think. Is he? All right, now you see. Now you're gonna make me put up the whole thing because that's gonna bug me now. Poor Mike Adamley. No, Mike Adamley is still alive. He's uh, 74 now. I thought didn't he have? A, wasn't there some issue? He had CTE. He had epilepsy, like I do. Yeah. Yeah, he had CTE. That was what got Mike Adamley. Because of a foosball. Because of foosball, yes. And as you know, foosball is the devil. 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 So we got Mike Adamley on commentary. Kofi Kingston debuted. This is when they were also starting to debut new talents and bring in new talents over there. Like we had Shelton Benjamin on ECW for a little bit. Uh, Lance Archer, better known as uh, Vance Archer, now Lance Archer, Lance Hoyt, whatever you want to call him. Woo, woo, woo. 
Zack Ryder would debut on ECW on Sci-Fi, starting the Long Island IC character. Uh, major talent. Him and the Major Brothers. I see what you did there. Him and the Major Brothers. Him and Kurt Hawkins were on with uh, Edge, and they are also doing some stuff on ECW. Um, yeah, there was a lot of people coming through that came through ECW that started there. Like a lot of people don't even realize that uh, Trent Beretta and Kalen Croft, they were the Dude Busters at the time. The Dude Busters is so, such a horrible tag team name. <laughs> uh, we had Tiffany, aka Taryn Terrell, as the ECW general manager. The former Mrs. Galloway. Yes. Um, now, here's one I don't think. Do you remember when he was on here for like two or three weeks? The one and only Mr. Gavin Spears, uh, a.k.a. Sean Spears, the chairman. He was on ECW on Sci-Fi for a little bit. He was a per- he was a perfect 10 talent, if you ask me. I would say so, my friend. You just, I, I asked he him. Was what, on tonight. He was, man. You Dude, you are on tonight. And the fact that his name was Stan. Buddy, what's your name? Stan. See? I just I- hit Stan. <laughs> yes, Sean Spears is Gavin Spears was on ECW on Sci-Fi for a little bit. Um, All right, I got to bring it up. Shannon Moore as the reject Shannon Moore. I'm the Prince of Punk, and I'm bringing sexy back. And then CM Punk just looks at him. You're a poser. And he smacks Shannon Moore right in the fucking face. Fucking Shannon Moore is the reject, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, that was a thing. Uh, the Great Kali was on ECW for a short time when him and Davari were on ECW, which also gave us Davari and Tommy Dream and the Great Kali. From ECW December just member of six. Yeah, we've had some people come and go on ECW, brother. Oh my and Lord. let's not forget, Mike. Yes. Knock knock. Oh, okay, we're gonna go here. So this is around we're going, the t- here. <laughs> we're going here. So this is a 08 and 09, which we're gonna get dive into more of. This is the time, folks, of the ECW Superstar Initiative. We go from Taryn Terrell, Tiffany as a GM, then Armando Alejandro Estrada, who <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, listen. <laughs> Do me. So we go from Armando being with Umaga, God rest his soul. Then Umaga is on SmackDown. Armando gets drafted to ECW, and he's the GM. Uh, then we have Superstar Initiative. Some guy comes in through the door, and his name is Braden Walker, aka Wildcat Chris Harris. And they're talking about it. You know, they're going to have a match tonight. And he goes, "He's the most wanted talent in America." He is, and he goes, uh, "What's your name?" You know. Braden Walker, I'm going to knock your brains out. Knock, knock, who's there? Braden Walker, I'm going to knock your brains out. Like, one of <laughs> – he was doomed from the start. Knock, and knock, he knock. didn't help the gear. He had, like, the oh, just plain God. black Mr. Perfect style singlet. Yeah. That, like, like who – and, and you know, honestly, I feel sorry for Chris Harris because, like, he, he's – I mean, he's had some serious health issues, you know, over the past couple of years. And to this day, at shows, he still has people doing the knock, knock, who's there? Braden Walker. And, like, just let it go. That was the infamous James Storm. and uh, Well, I mean, even at indie shows, he still has it. Well, of course they are. Well, first of all, I could understand at that time, because, number one, that was freaking hilarious. James Storm trying so hard not to laugh. Yeah, he broke. He couldn't. He broke. He couldn't. It was beer money against Matt Hardy and Chris Harris. You see him just going, like, did you do you even remember like when he came back for that? Because it was beer money against Matt Hardy and Chris Harris. Chris Harris comes out as cold blooded Matt Hardy. Cold blooded Matt Hardy, and then Wildcat Chris Harris comes out. It comes out to the AE AMW theme. Yeah, he didn't even get a pop. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> like America's Most Wanted, one of the top teams ever, and he just comes out. No pop. Nothing. Nothing. Like, oh, oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, and they, well, at least we got an AMW reunion in TNA years later at the TNA reunion, that was cool. But yeah, people like leave him alone, like it was 2008, we're in 2024 now, Le- leave the poor guy alone. For, but for yes. 16 years, let it go, yeah. Knock, knock, who's there? Braden Walker, I'm gonna knock your brains out. He has this match with Armando where he wins with a cross body and he literally lands on Armando's head. And I thought he broke his neck, and it was ugly. Then the next week, him and Matt Hardy tie-in as ECW champion freaking he's like hey man I hear you're a w- real wildcat they had a backstage segment and then he beats James Curtis the former Casey James who teamed with Idol Stevens uh Aaron Stevens the teacher Damien Sandow Damien Sandow yes 
And you're welcome. You're welcome. And then Braden Walker wins with a perfect flex, which is funny that Dan, that Daniel brought up the Mr. Perfect gear. He wins with the perfect flex, and that was the end of Chris Harris in WWE. He was soon then released. He had three friggin' weeks of TV, and he was gone. And then we I also... Think, I think it was honestly the Armando Estrada thing. Though. Yeah, it was, that's what did it, because he almost killed Armando. Yeah. And, well, Ricky Ortiz, the rally... Ricky Ortiz is the luckiest man in the world. Because you know who he's married to? Who? Le- Layla L. Ricky Ortiz, you son of a bitch. You lucky, lucky son of a bitch, Ricky O. Uh, the big O, you remember the rally towel? Yeah. Did you like him as the, he had like the freaking Epstein Afro from Welcome Back, Connor, and he had the rally towel. What were your thoughts on that? No. No. Did you like Lance Archer as Vance Archer and his disaster pieces? I always liked him. Like it was, they had a potential with that. It was good. Like that was the only like, really good thing. They dropped it. They dropped it with him. Then he teamed with Brian Myers, Kurt Hawk, Kurt Hawkins for a little bit, and that was it for Vance Archer. But yeah, there was a lot of come and goes on, on ECW. But we're back, going back to the 09 time period. I, we got to bring this one up. So Jack Swagger is the ECW champion. Who's he gonna face? This is this is in April of 09 and we hear the infamous music the new remix version of just close your eyes and todd grisham with the infamous call it's it's christian <laughs> way to hype it up todd and then matt striker goes this moment has just become instantly classic um yeah this was at the end of tna christian cage's tna career uh he got beat up by the main event mafia yeah, and then that was the end of, of Christian going. And they actually mentioned it on TNA. He's like, I hear rumors that you want to go back to WWE. Well, guess what? And then he, they friggin' beat up Christian, and that was the end of Christian's tenure in TNA. Like, did you think that was a good send-off for Christian before he got the ECW? No. I think you could tell. he. Well, he was supposed to – you know what? This is all that damn Tyson Tomko's fault. Here's why. So for those who don't remember, when Jeff Hardy got ran off the road in, in Survivor Series 08, they did that storyline, right? So the person who was supposed to be the one who run him off the road was Christian Cage. And they were going to have a feud with Jeff Hardy and Christian and Edge and all that and Matt Hardy. And Tyson Tomko was going to come back with Christian and be his problem solver. But Tyson Tomko did a dark match. And, well, much like Braden Walker, Tyson Tomko was out of shape. And it was bad. So they nixed that in the butt. And now we have Christian coming back as a part of the ECW brand helping the young talents, which I got to say, I liked his run as ECW champion. I did. He helped a lot of those cats out. And, you know, honestly, I'll say Christian is criminally underrated. Very much so, especially now with what he's doing with uh, with AEW. My goodness. The patriarchy. Mm-hmm. He, I, I look at somebody like Christian. This is what Jericho should be doing. Not the learning tree. Honestly, I think Jericho has overstayed his welcome in AEW. In just fucking go back to WWE. Finish your career out and be done. Go in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, for for me, it's like, can you, or not even that. Like, Chris, just take like three to six months off. Like, I'm, I'm tired of seeing your fucking face. Chris Jericho has had gimmicks in AEW like Big Show has had heel and face turns. And, and just, he kills these young cats. Like, Chris, you've become what you hated. Like, you hated Hogan and all them holding people down. You're that guy, Chris. You were that guy now. Like, really, like, who who has ascended to that next level? Like, at world nobody. title contention. Nobody. Like, nobody. I mean, you've got Ricky Starks, who, well, you know, some, gonna go to WWE. rumors are saying that he's turned down multiple. Honestly, we know where Ricky's going. Well, also the fact, you know, he's going to go to WWE, but number two, like, he didn't want to feud with Big Bill. He didn't do that quickly. He's tired of the fucking tag matches. Like, He's like, I'm, he's like, dude, whatever you're giving me, it sucks. Like, I'm tired of this fucking place. I want to get the. He's like Ethan Page. Like Ethan Page was like Conan mentioned like the text messages she got from Ethan Page. He's like, I fucking hate it here. I want to get the fuck out of here. Ricky Starks is at that point now. I fucking hate it here. I want to get out of here. That's where he's at. Uh, but yes, Christian Cage comes back, uh, wins the ECW Championship from Jack Swagger. Um, Jack Swagger, Christian, and Tommy Dreamer all feud for the ECW Championship. Now, this is your one of your boys, and he's one of my boys because I'm a fan of Tommy Dreamer as well. Tommy Dreamer wins the WWE version of ECW, much like when he won the ECW championship back in 2000 from Taz. Tommy Dreamer did not want to win the ECW championship. No. 
He never Again, wanted it. And he, and he wins it in WWE. What were your thoughts on them giving him the title? I remember the gimmick was that if he didn't win the title, he was going to get fired. Yes, or he was, yeah, correct. He was going to retire. And Tommy Dreamer is one of those guys, that, to me, he reminds me of a Dusty Rhodes, a guy who you would look at and be like, yeah, there's nothing really special. Tommy Dreamer is a common, common guy, you know, works hard, and you'll want to see him, you'll want to root for him. And has given so much to so many people. He deserves it. For me, and I will mention this before we go back to Tommy Dreamer, one thing I did want to mention, because we mentioned John Morrison earlier, right, with his ECW championship run and the character, you know, up, the up in the character, the reassessment, the overall remodeling of his character into John Morrison, the overall aesthetic and everything that he put into that. What were your thoughts on him and The Miz? I'm going to go here. The Dirt Sheet, the talk show, and them as a tag team. That run was good, though. Oh, and honestly, they were a great tag team. Like, Miz, to me, is another guy criminally underrated. Dude, he went from the hoorah, the, the uh, tough enough guy, the reality show guy, and then on ECW, he's the chick magnet. He had Extreme Expose, Kelly Kelly, Layla, and uh, Brooke Adams, Brooke Tessmacher with him. Like, he did this thing, man. The on-screen Mrs. Bully Ray. <laughs> that fucking aces and eights was so bad. <laughs> it was a cheap imitation Sons of Anarchy. It was so bad. Then they, It got worse when they brought in Tito Ortiz to go against the main event mafia with Rampage Jackson because they wanted to promote their fight on Spike TV. Fucking nobody cared. Nobody cared. It was just, it was such a dreck moment. And yeah, so Morrison and Miz was also a plus side with ECW because as you can see, folks, we're really touching upon the, the, the good, the bad, and the what the fuck. And as you, we've talked about thus far, there's a lot of what the fuck up in here. But we go from Jack Swagger, Christian, Tommy Dreamer. Then we go back to Christian. And then here comes our boy. Uh, William Regal is now in ECW after him and Layla L were a thing for a short time. And then he got he goes to ECW. Um, he has a new group, and it's William Regal, Ezekiel Jackson, and Vladimir Kozlov. Yes. Yes, that happened. It did. That happened. It very much did. <laughs> then Christian has a match with William Regal at SummerSlam, and it goes like fucking, what, four, five seconds? <laughs> like, they like, cut the time, and he went like fucking five seconds. Like, you squashed poor William Regal in five seconds on pay-per-view. I, it was I, like, don't, I don't understand, for the life of me, why Vince hates William Regal, or why Vince hated William Regal. <laughs> he got literally squashed. In like five, six seconds, it was literally bell rings, one on prettier, one, two, three. That was literally the match, right? It was literally the match. It was literally the match. Oh, my Lord. It was bad. I think it makes sense. Yeah, so we have, from Christian having that run with, I mean, he beat Zack Ryder. He beat Vance Archer. He wrestled a lot of the young guys and made them look really good, especially Zack Ryder. Um, We mentioned Tommy Dreamer. Zack Ryder would be the one to beat Tommy Dreamer and Tommy Dreamer's last ECW match. And yeah, that was a great speech. He brought his kids and in, into the ring and he got to hold them and kiss them and love them. And he spoke from the heart. If you've not seen that speech, it was amazing. And then Tommy Dreamer would go on to TNA and do fucking EV 2.0 and that God awful TNA and ECW. Oh yeah. That was, that was the end of Tommy Dreamer WWE then TNA. Whoa. <laughs> I don't mean to say it like that, but it was bad. This was going towards Hogan era, Monday Night Wars, TNA, WWE. Yeah. So that was the end of Tommy Dreamer. Exactly. Monday Night Skirmish. The Skirmish. Okay. I got to mention this. I don't know if you remember this. So Zack Ryder, also a thing. He has Rosa Mendez as his manager. And he's feuding with the Hurricane. They brought the Hurricane to ECW. He started as Gregory Helms, and it's like, wait a minute, what just happened? The superhero. I'm like, because Gregory Helms was the Hurricane at the time. He was just Hurricane Helms and Gregory Helms, but with no superhero powers. He was just a dude. And then they finally brought back the Hurricane. What were your thoughts on the Hurricane coming back to ECW? <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. what it was. I mean, they put Paul Burchill on ECW. And he was actually Paul Burchill, the Ripper, Paul Burchill, not the pirate, and not 
wanting to have sex with his sister, Vince McMahon, you sick son of a bitch. You had the guy, Vince, who wanted to have a storyline where he was the father of his daughter's child. You found a way to get incest into a WWE angle. Congratulations, Vince. And people, who could somebody complain? You know, somebody complained. It was either USA, it was somebody complained, and then you notice that got dropped really quickly. I mean, we know uh, there are people that have said, you know, oh, the, the first it was going to be Vince, you know, it was going to be the father of Stephanie and Triple H's first child. Yes. Then it was going to be Shane and Stephanie. And then Chef Stephanie. This is not Game of Thrones, people. No. And it's the same thing with Paul Birchall and Katie Lee. Like, you could have just had, okay, they're brother and sister tag team. They're heels. They don't have to be like that, like 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 that, like, you know, but they, they went with that. And then, like, it was quickly dropped. Like, they were just brother and sister. Okay, here's Paul Birchall and Katie Lee. Then on ECW, they had that. And then they briefly feuded with, as another one of the early stages of ECW, we had Alicia Fox. She was the wedding planner at Edge's wedding, and they kiss. And then all of a sudden, she's repackaged, like we mentioned with John Morrison. She's repackaged, and she's with Steve Lewington, a British wrestler who you guys may remember as DJ Gabriel, the Alex Wright of ECW. He comes out dancing, and he's wearing the fucking leather jacket and the sunglasses, and him and Alicia Fox are a team. That happened. Do you, do you remember DJ Gabriel? I do not. So, yeah, he was a UK wrestler at the time in OVW, Steve Lewington. And he, you remember Alicia Fox in ECW or no? I tried to block her WWE tenure out. Wow. Okay. Well, yes, there was, there was, there was that. Again, this is a part of the new superstar initiative. Um, we had that. We had, my goodness gracious, like we're getting towards the end of this, folks, but. Like I said, it was this brand. And then after Christian and William Regal, we get Ezekiel Jackson. <laughs> no, no, well, excuse me, before Ezekiel. Shelton Benjamin and Christian Cage had this great TLC match at TLC 09, like this great ladder match. Like Shelton and Christian really had a good match for the East Debbie Championship. Oh, I great match. Watch that because Christian and Shelton tore it down. Like they made Shelton Benjamin a baby face. Like it was good. It was really, really good. That was a plus. That was on the plus side of things. But then we get to fucking Royal Rumble 2010. And oh my God, boy, we got Christian and Ezekiel Jackson. Christian wins. And then Vince McMahon goes on live television and says, this is going to be the last night of ECW. And starting next week, we're going to have a new show, NXT. Okay. Yeah, that, that was it for ECW. And then we have the Extreme Rules match with Ezekiel Jackson and Christian for the ECW Championship. Uh, William Regal gets involved. There's a whole lot of plunder down under. And then Ezekiel Jackson hits the Uranagi through a table. One, two, three. Uh, Ezekiel Jackson is the new and last ECW champion. And good rinse that piece of shit, Bell. Oh, that, that's all you care about in this is that I get the silver. It's <laughs> ugly. I know it was, man. I know. I know. But, yeah. That was the end of ECW. We also had, all right, I'm going to bring this up since we mentioned Tony Atlas because this was the thing for a little bit. <laughs> Abraham Washington show starring Abraham Washington. And now here's your host, Abraham Washington. <laughs> God, what were your thoughts on Abraham Washington? He wasn't bad. Something different. I mean, they tried some talk show segment with him, but it kind of, you know, it was what it was. It was, yeah. Again, they're, they're trying to experiment with stuff. And I mean, you had... That's what wrestling is. Yeah. I mean, you had Carlito and Primo there with Miz and Morrison. And you had the... You literally had the Bella Twins. This is before I Wish You Died in the Womb. They had Brie as a baby face with Carlito and Primo. And then you had Nikki dressing provocatively with the Miz and Morrison. Do you remember when they like did this brief split with the Bellas? <laughs> you see that? <laughs> I'm like, okay, fine, all right. To add to the feud, I guess, with Carlito and Primo and Miz and Morrison. Like, again, this was around the time they were trying to experiment on stuff, but I think you could tell as we're talking about it and running through it, Daniel, like it was going it, it was going down. <laughs> it was going down. It was the Titanic. It was really going downhill. And then Ezekiel Jackson as the last ECW champion didn't help matters much. Also, I will say one of the debuts from this time with the Superstar Initiative, Sheamus. Sheamus, for a short time before he would go on to Raw and beat John Cena. Almost immediately. Almost immediately. Uh, I mean, it did give us Sheamus, so that, that was a plus. Wasn't too um, bad, fella. Not too bad, fella. And banger after banger, banger. after banger. banger. 
So yeah, that, that was that was ECW on Sci Fi. I know we mixed it around a little bit, but they're really after from 06 and 07, there's not that much to talk about because it kind of yeah, it kind of dipped. It really it really kind of dipped, man. But you know what? Ultimately, uh, this is what I choose to focus on as far as ECW. Because yep. guys say like the guys say ECW. ECW. You know, it, the legacy of ECW, without ECW, we wouldn't have NXT. No, we would not. That's so, true. It is what it is. I mean, I enjoyed, you know, was it great? Oh, it could have been worse. Yeah. But it was a launching pad for a lot of superstars, which is the good takeout, takeover. I think. Good takeout. Looking at you, Phil Brooks. Yep. It was a good launching pad, and it was a good start. And it, and it was a one good takeaway from UCW is what I'm trying to say. But, yeah, that, that was that was it, folks. And, I mean, we mentioned the one-night stands, the infamous 05 with Paul Heyman's promo, and 06, and just everything that encompassed the ECW brand. And then Vince McMahon, yeah, did what he did with it. But, I mean, we got NXT out of it, which – well, I will say this. We got NXT – once we got to like 2012, 2013 NXT, I was happy because then we had the game show era of NXT. And I mean, that was kind of, yeah, but it did give us Brian Daniels and Daniel Bryan in the midst for you. So that was a plus. And Titus O'Neil. Titus O'Neil falling. And on. then we would we would have had the, the trip heard around the world. Oh, God. Well, the, the beer keg on NXT and then the greatest Royal Rumble happened and Titus just right into the ring. You know what made that? Because, you know, I, I can't not talk about it. Corey Graves. They replayed it over and over. Well, because you, you're, you're seeing it when it first happened. Like, you didn't see it. Like, you see him come down the ring. You're like, oh, okay. And then where'd he go? And then you just hear Corey Graves laughing like an idiot. <laughs> Which, folks, there's a million clips of it on YouTube. Check it out. It's literally the greatest thing in the world. Just right under there. <laughs> and you hear kind of so little. As he is like going like, ah, ah. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but no, he could have really got hurt. He could have got it. It, it. What's under that ring? My God, thank God he didn't get hurt. But oh man, that that was that, that was something. Now, what is going to be something is we again. We hope you enjoyed our analysis and our rigmarole as we do with this show on ECW on Sci Fi. Um, that's actually probably going to be one of the next episodes, like in their future episode. You just gave me the early days of NXT. There's a topic for next season. Thank you, Daniel. I like it. I like it. So our next topic, however, is going to be, because we had to switch some stuff around, for episode four, we are going to be talking about, since it is that time of the year and we're going to have that pay-per-view next week, the worst Money in the Bank cash-ins and pay-per-view events for the Money in the Bank. Yeah. We're going to go worst this time because we've done best cash-ins. And we're going to do worst, which I'm looking at you, Baron Corbin. Yeah. I'm looking at you, Baron Corbin. I'm looking at you, Damian Sandow. Uh, I'm looking at – I'm not even going to say Brock Lesnar because – I well, well, I'm going to put Brock Lesnar in there too because I was so pissed because Mustafa was that close. That close. And then here I'm looking comes at you, John Cena. Oh, oh, the DQ heard around the world, yes. I'm looking at you, Kennedy. Okay. Oh, 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 poor Otis. Yeah, we're, we're going to get into it in the next episode, Otis. Oh, here, here you go, Miz. Tucky, Tucky, Tucky turns heel. Fucking Tucky. All right, we'll, we'll get into it next week because we got some things to say. But we hope you enjoyed this episode of Uncaged. Uh, Daniel Crimmins, tell us where we can follow you. Pile Driver Pundit, TSK, go ahead. TSK is coming back. We will be doing a review coming up of Forbidden Door tomorrow night. Keep an eye out on it. Pundit is coming back, recording tomorrow. I know I keep saying that because, you know, life being what life is. Getting back in the saddle tomorrow, so keep an eye out. Big things be coming. Big things be coming like Big Daddy V and ECW. Viscera. God rest the soul, Viscera. I will say that. Good old Nelson Frazier. Oh, my Lord. Big Daddy. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. And the Who's that man in the Hall of Fame? Right. I mean, we got a few with him in ECW. We got him and the Boogeyman. And the Boogeyman giving Matt Stryker the worms. My goodness gracious. Yes, that happened. The uh, world's largest love machine. machine. Viscera. The storyline with, with Lillian Garcia. He's got to have it. God. 
Oh man, that'll be another episode. But good lord, we hope again. We hope you enjoyed this. Um, as always, folks, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mike Larkin ninety two eight hundred seventy four. Bells, right under there, wherever. Eight hundred seventy, yeah, eight hundred seventy four subscribers thus far. Let's keep it going, folks. Keep it on, keep it on. Uh, StephenMikeShow.com, LFCFights.com, SMShow1, MCL92 on Twitter, Larkin underscore 92, MLarkinMB on Instagram, DCrimmons1 on Instagram. Give my boy Dan a follow and check out each and everything that we got coming up from Uncaged from seasons one, two, and three, and now four. Uh, we got a hell of a rest of the season. We are almost halfway through this bad boy. Stay tuned, stay locked, and for Daniel Crimmins, my name is Mike Larkin. This concludes another edition of Uncaged, and, well... I only got one thing left to say to that. You know what that is? What would that be? What up, G? What up, G? We'll see you next time. Use me while we close this out. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, we're ending on that. That was great. Goodbye, everybody.